Welcome to another chipset comparison. We're back with a new and improved video which includes the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, MediaTek Dimensity 9300, Apple's A17 Pro, Samsung Exynos 2400, and Google's Tensor 3. Whether you want to edit photos, render 4K videos, or play some hardcore CPU intensive games, you're going to need an amazing setup. But before we dive into a juicy comparison, hi, I'm Olive, your host here at Versus, and I'd like to thank Hide Me VPN for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out the link in the description to get your first three months free, but more on that later. To ensure these tests are as fair as possible, we've made sure all of the devices are charged to 100% battery capacity. With the help of a lux meter, all of the phones have been set to the same brightness level. We've also set the highest resolution possible, activated game booster, and set the refresh rate to adaptive wherever possible. We will also be keeping track of the temperatures from start to finish. Finish. For those of you who haven't watched our previous video, this right here is a timer. It helps you keep track of how long each phone is taking to finish a task. Here is where you can see the temperature of the devices as they are running at full speed. And lastly, we have the battery levels. Now that you are aware of where everything is located, we can kick off our tests. One last note, we do take five minute breaks between some hardcore tasks to give the phone some space to breathe. Adobe Lightroom is going to be our first task. One of the most handy programs developed by Adobe, it helps you import and comprehensively edit a large number of photos. It's a really useful tool for us here at Versus. Right, so we wanted to really go over the top here by first applying a preset to 50 JPEG and 50 RAW files. It looks like quite the close competition here, but the winner is 8 Gen 3 with 20 seconds, followed by Exynos with just one second more. Dimensity is a super close second at 22 seconds with the A17 Pro coming in with 50 seconds. And lastly, we have the Tensor with 54 seconds. If you feel the results are passing by too quickly, then you can also take a look at the chart that we've prepared for you at the end of every single test. That was a pretty hectic start, and I'm positive that we've gotten you excited for the rest. If you're enjoying this video so far, then do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button as it helps us out a lot, and it also lets us know what type of content you enjoy the most. Alrighty, presets are applied, so it is time to render. You can see the temperature slowly starting to creep up and up and up, and I've always wondered if our extreme tests would cause any of the phones to overheat and crash, but thankfully, this hasn't happened yet. The A17 Pro completes the task first in just 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Next comes Dimensity with 4 minutes and 41 seconds. In third place is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 with 6 minutes and 11 seconds, followed by Exynos that finishes just 3 seconds later with 6 minutes and 14 seconds. Unfortunately, the Tensor comes in last place with a whole 10 minutes and 44 seconds. That was a pretty nice test to finish up Lightroom, and it is crazy that it took the Tensor so long to finish. Nevertheless, here are the final results once again. Now that we're done with Lightroom, we can move on to Adobe Rush. What can you do with Rush, you may ask? The answer is fairly simple. You can edit videos on your phone in quite an easy way. What we've done here is create a timeline with a 4K video, which is just over one minute long. We've used some B-roll that we have stored from some of our previous videos, and then we've also included some graphic animations into the mix. However, it seems like there are still issues with the Exynos chipset with regards to this app, as it crashes and leaves us hanging. Shortly after this happened, the race between the A17 Pro and MediaTek reached a conclusion as the former will land first place by finishing the task in 53 seconds. The latter in this case will take second place by coming in at 1 minute and 24 seconds. Snapdragon finished at 2 minutes and 23 seconds, and then we have the Tensor. There also seemed to be a problem here, which we didn't experience in our previous tests. It took over an hour for the video to render, and we know that the Tensor 3 is not that slow. Perhaps it's due to the latest update from Google, because since then, some apps haven't been working as usual. Next is KindMaster. It is a free video editing app, and we have also added some videos here and rendered the video in 4K. Let's see who is the fastest this time. 
And whoa, Dimensity renders the video in just 15 seconds, followed by 8 Gen 3 with 24 seconds. Samsung's Exynos renders the video in 29 seconds, Tensor 3 needs 33 seconds, and surprisingly, the A17 Pro finishes in 46 seconds. So Dimensity wins here, even if it was very close with 8 Gen 3. The Pixel and the iPhone have a lot of catching up to do here. Next in line is Microsoft Excel. 60,000 lines are present in this Excel file, and we're seeing the results coming in super fast with A17 Pro readying the file for editing in only six seconds. Snapdragon and MediaTek get there in 10, Exynos in 11, and Tensor in 13 seconds. All the phones managed to lock this down in a short amount of time, and it just shows you how much companies have been able to stack computation in these small things over the years. So now that we've seen performances in Lightroom, Rush, Kindmasters, and Excel, let us have some fun and play. Before we started playing, we made sure performance or boost mode is on, if the device has the option. And we run an app that displays some stats, such as frames per second. Unfortunately, the app no longer works with the Pixel since the latest update. It is therefore not included in this test. Bloons TD6 is the name of the game, which is a standard tower defense game. The main point here is to see how quickly the frames per second drop on the respective smartphones. In a normal game, you will hardly notice any frame per second drops, which is why we are exaggerating a little. We don't just send a few units, we send thousands at once, and you can see how the phones start to struggle. The A17 Pro drops from 60 frames per second to under 37 frames per second. The Dimensity drops to under 19 frames per second. The Exynos also drops under 18 frames per second. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 drops to under 11 frames per second. It's super strange why the Galaxy S24 Ultra performs worse than the Galaxy S24 Plus in this case. But I guess that's just how it is, and we're only showing you the results. Now let's take a few seconds to talk about Hide Me VPN. If you're someone who's seeking for greater privacy as well as greater freedom, or perhaps you wish to access blocked or region-bound content. Well, then you'll want to hear this next part. Hide Me VPN is one of the fastest offshore VPNs with 24-7 support and cross-platform access. Enjoy 10 gigabyte speeds across 2,300 servers globally. You can also navigate the web with a trusted ally, SmartGuard, proactively guarding against malware, tracking, ads, and phishing threats in real time. Plus, they don't store logs, ensuring your actions remain yours. Best part? You can start for free. Click the link in the description to secure your online freedom with Hide Me VPN. Simple, secure, and yours. Geekbench will be first on our list. What is Geekbench? Nah, none of you are going to be asking that question, but just in case, it tests functionality of devices along with benchmarking the CPU by modeling your real-world usage. One of my favorite things about Geekbench is that it gives you the single-core and multi-core scores separately. You can run multiple processes at the same time with these multi-cores, and in turn, makes it easier to multitask and run more than one app at once. Single-core scores have arrived. The A17 Pro takes the cake, followed by the A. Gen 3, the Dimensity, the Exynos, and lastly, the Tensor. Looking at the multi-core scores, the A17 Pro is still the leader close to the Dimensity. Next is the 8 Gen 3, the Exynos, and the Tensor. The difference between the Tensor and the rest of the chipsets is quite significant. Antutu is up next. Small but important information, Antutu is incomparable on Android and iOS due to the kernel and development language being different. Nevertheless, that's not going to stop us from, you know, doing these tests. and allowing you to use these results as you please. That being said, I'm glad we had this test on our list because Dimensity actually manages to reach over 2 million points here with their powerhouse chipset. Snapdragon is second as Exynos rounds out the top three. A17 Pro and Tensor will take their respective places at fourth and fifth. By the way, feel free to interrupt and comment on anything you feel is interesting regarding any of the tests or the phones in the comment section. Let's keep it going full speed ahead. 3D Mark helps you relate your score to real world game performance by estimating the frame rates you can expect in a selection of popular games. I think this is super useful because compared to, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of people are gaming on mobile phones now. 
Higher points equal better results. And to make this test about flagships, we're obviously going to be choosing the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test once again. 3D Mark puts the phones through 20 loops and tells us the best and worst result for each phone, which is much appreciated. This also lets us see how consistent the results are when we look at all the loops together. For the best loop, the Snapdragon is at over 4,700 points, with the Dimensity also doing a super good job by getting over 4,100 points. The Exynos also performed very well with over 4,000 points. The A17 Pro is somewhat disappointing here with over 3,400 points. As always, well, almost always, the Tensor has unfortunately ended up in last place. For the lowest loop, the Snapdragon performed the best, shortly behind is the A17 Pro and the Exynos. Dimensity sliding into fourth and Tensor in fifth place. Next up, it's Geekbench ML, a new addition to the Geekbench squad. It basically measures your mobile device's machine learning performance. It can also help you understand whether your device is ready to run the latest machine learning applications. We have chosen the MPU test. Running through these tasks at full speed will be the A17 Pro, which was the only one to get almost 6,000 points. Its closest competition achieved half the score as Dimensity took the silver medal. Ten Tensor gets the bronze medal, and I think we have a problem here with both Galaxy devices. We have carried out the test several times to see if we have done anything wrong. We also looked in some forums to see why the score was so low, but found absolutely nothing. Do you have any idea why this is the case? If you do, let us know in the comments. Let's move on to the last test. GFX Bench is a high-end graphics benchmark that measures mobile performance with next-gen graphic features across all platforms. We have selected four tests to see which chipset is the strongest. At the Aztec Ruins test, Dimensity's performance is the best. Second place is the Snapdragon, next one is the Tensor, the A17 Pro, and lastly is the Exynos. Surprisingly, the Tensor wins the second test. After that comes the Dimensity, then the Snapdragon, then the Exynos, and surprisingly, the A17 Pro is actually in last place. Next test, we have the Tensor in first place once again, then the Dimensity, the Snapdragon, the Exynos, and then the A17 Pro. In the low-level test, almost all are on par, except for the A17 Pro. Before everyone thought that the iPhone was totally bad and had nothing to offer in gaming, well, that's not the case. Either way, you can't compare iOS and Android directly with this test, but we wanted to show you the test anyway. So here are the final results. Snapdragon takes the Lightroom preset, while A17 Pro takes the Lightroom render. In Adobe Rush, the A17 Pro takes first place with 53 seconds, followed by Dimensity with 1 minute 24 seconds. Then comes Snapdragon, followed by Tensor, which took over an hour, which is unusual, so we're not too sure what happened there. And unfortunately, there was an error with Exynos as it was completely unable to export the video. Dimensity takes a win with Kindmaster, and then A17 Pro wins XL Bloons and Geekbench 6. And Tutu also goes to Dimensity. Best and worst loops of 3D Mark go to Snapdragon, and Geekbench ML goes to A17 Pro. In the first test on GFX Bench, Dimensity takes the win, but surprisingly in the second and third test, Tensor takes the win, followed by A17 Pro winning the fourth and last round. A17 Pro was able to utilize the battery of the device the best with 78% left, and unfortunately the Galaxy S24 Plus drained the most battery with 66% left at the end of the tests. We put an insane amount of effort into this video, so if you enjoyed watching it, then please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to be a part of our Versus community if you aren't already. And with that being said, we'll see you in the next video, and until then, take care.